Today we're asking you to describe your gender using some diagrams. When people ask about your gender, what they usually mean is, are you male or female? But gender can mean all sorts of things. Everyday use of the word gender might include how someone feels, what clothes they wear, what sex they were assigned at birth, how their body is shaped, and many more characteristics. So we think it'd be better to be a little bit more specific about what we mean by gender. We use gender to mean characteristics related to masculinity, femininity, and gender diversity. This refers to socialized, cultural, or learned characteristics that may relate to your culture, your roles, your beliefs, or things you like to do. Some examples of gender characteristics might be clothing, behavior, or how you present or express yourself. But it's up to you what you think goes here. Some identity labels related to gender could be feminine, masculine, or genderqueer, among others. But what about bodily characteristics that are associated with maleness and femaleness? We use the term sex for those features. These are typically understood as biological, bodily, physical, and or innate inborn, but not everybody agrees on this. Sex may also refer to your internal sense of your own sex, others' beliefs about your sex, and so on. Some examples of sex characteristics might be vulvas, penises, breasts, body shape, facial hair, or the pitch of your voice. But again, it's up to you what you think goes here. Some identity labels related to sex could be male, female, transgender, or intersex, among others. But wait, there are some characteristics that might not easily fall into either gender or sex. For example, people's whole identities might be both gender and sex. We use the term gender sex for these types of personal characteristics. Groups like women's book clubs are often organized around gender sex. Anyone who identifies as a woman can participate. The same goes for groups like men's choirs. Some other examples of gender sex characteristics could be what pronouns you use for yourself or the way you see yourself as a whole person. Some identity labels related to gender sex could be woman, trans man, or non-binary, among others. Okay, now that we've gone over some terms, let's get to the diagrams you'll be using in this study. This is the gender sex diagram. It may look complicated at first, but we'll give you plenty of examples of how people might use it. It's important to remember that there's no one way of being gendered or sexed that is more right or legitimate than another. So, however you use the diagrams is the right way. Now we're ready to start with some examples. Hi, I'm Kendra. I identify as a woman and I feel that I am a woman, so I'll place a dot right here at woman. Hi, I'm Alice. I also identify as a woman, so I could place myself at woman, just like Kendra. But I also feel a little bit like a man, so I'm going to move my dot around the outside ring towards man. Hi, I'm Alex. I identify as bigender. Some days I feel like a woman, and some days I feel like a man. So I'll place myself right between man and woman and indicate that it depends on the day. Other people may use multiple dots to indicate that they feel like more than one gender sex. Today I feel more like a man than a woman, so I'll put another dot closer to man and indicate that this is my status. A person's status is how they are presenting or feeling in a particular moment or on a certain day. And this can be the same or different across someone's life. So my status location indicates that I am currently presenting as a man. Other days I might have a different status depending on the context or how I'm feeling. My other location is how I generally feel and think about my gender sex. This is called an orientation. For me, realizing that I feel like both a man and a woman was what led me to identify as bi-gender. So I'll indicate that this dot is my orientation. You can think of orientation as what resonates with you or how you generally approach your gender sex. Hi, I'm Jamie. I identify as non-binary because I see myself as not really being a man or a woman. I don't really feel like either of those describe me very well. So I'll place myself somewhere in the middle of the circle, which is the non-binary area. Since I would say I feel more like a man than a woman, I'll place my dot closer to that side. 
The non-binary area has smaller and smaller circles that go towards all gender sexes. That means that the closer you locate yourself to the middle, the more you identify with aspects of all kinds of gender sexes. For me, this location represents both my status and my orientation. I express myself in a non-binary way, and I feel like that resonates with me. Oh, interesting. I identify as genderqueer, and I feel I have roughly the same orientation as Jamie. But unlike Jamie, I feel like I am challenging the norms of my culture by being non-binary. That's what the challenge area is for. Placing yourself in that area means that you think your gender sex challenges norms in your culture. See those dotted lines? Those are the norm boundaries. They represent whatever your culture sees as the boundaries of who counts as a man or woman. Crossing those places you in the challenge area. The challenge area might be useful if you think your location would be confusing to people or go against their expectations. For example, I think that most people in my culture expect that everyone is either a man or a woman, but I don't identify with either. So I'll put my dot in the non-binary area towards man, but in the challenge area. Thanks everyone! As you can see, there are a lot of different ways you can indicate your gender sex using this diagram and people who have similar identities might place themselves differently. Like we said, there's no one right way to use the diagrams. You may be thinking that a lot of these examples are too complex or not relevant to your own gender sex, and that's okay. Some people may need this complexity to describe their gender sexes, but other people may find that they only need a few pieces of the diagrams. There's actually something else to consider here. So not only do you have your location, but you can also indicate how strongly you identify with that location using the strength dimension. Let's see how some of the people you just met would use this scale. Kendra here. My location was right at woman, so how strongly do I identify with this location? Being a woman is pretty important to me, but not the most important part of my sense of self. So I'd say I'm at about 80% strength. And look, we can combine these dimensions to make a 3D diagram. See how the diagram gets smaller as strength goes down? This might help you think about what the strength dimension means. The lower the strength, the less space gender sex takes up in your sense of self. And as you can see, at 0%, gender sex is no longer relevant. So you can think of these diagrams in 3D if that helps. But to make things easier, we've made the top circle bigger on the diagrams you'll be using. Okay, let's get back to the examples. Alex here again. Remember how my location was in between man and woman? Well, I don't see gender sex as a very strong part of how I think about myself. So for this dimension, I'll put my strength pretty low at 20%. Hi, I'm Eli. I didn't place myself on this diagram earlier because I identify as agender. I don't really feel like gender sex applies to me. The bottom of the diagram is for indicating that a component doesn't apply to you. So I'll put a dot there and a 0% on the strength scale. So now we know the different pieces of the gender sex diagram. But gender sex isn't the only component we're interested in. Remember gender and sex? We're also going to ask you about those. First, let's go over the gender diagram. Remember, we use gender to mean characteristics related to masculinity, femininity, and gender diversity. This diagram is very similar to the gender sex diagram, but instead of woman, man, and gender sex, this diagram will include the terms masculine, feminine, and gender. Let's see how some of the people we met before might use this diagram. I'd place myself at feminine. I have really short hair, which some might see as not very feminine, but it feels feminine to me. Being feminine resonates with me. I feel like I really relate to femininity so I'll put orientation next to this dot. However, I'm a little more masculine at work, so I'll put a dot more towards masculine and indicate that it's my status at work. I'll put this strength at 100%. Gender is definitely a big part of who I am. This is also a good time to introduce another part of the diagram that might help you think about your location. See these blue lines? They represent levels of specificity. This dotted line is the most specific area because it represents one particular gender. Then locations get less and less specific as you go down. This dotted line is the least specific area because it represents multiple genders. Since my orientation is specifically feminine, 
a high level of specificity makes sense to me. However, my status is both masculine and feminine, so that location is less specific. I'd say I'm a little bit feminine, but more masculine. I also like playing around with all types of gender expression. I can never just pick one. So I'll shade region that shows all the ways I like to express my gender. This playing around with gender is pretty important to my sense of self, so I'll put it at 85% strength. Jamie here again. I see my gender as less about how I look, and more about my personality. My personality is pretty feminine, but not completely so. So I'll put a dot right at feminine, but at 75% strength. The last diagram will be the sex diagram. Remember, we use sex to mean bodily characteristics that are associated with maleness, femaleness, and sex diversity. So instead of masculine, feminine, and gender, this diagram will include the terms male, female, and sex. Let's see how some of the people we met before might use this diagram. As you might remember, I identify as a woman, but I also identify as trans. I was assigned male at birth, so I'll put a dot at male and write at birth. I transitioned a few years ago, and now my body is female. Most of the time, I'm just female. But sometimes, I'm reminded that being trans goes against my culture's norms, so I'll shade a region on the female side of the diagram that goes across the norm boundary. Other trans people might use this diagram or the other diagrams differently. This is just what makes sense to me. Being trans is very important to me. I'll put its strength at 100%. Though I feel like my gender and gender sex are non-binary, I identify as female and have what I would consider a typical female body. So I'll put my dot right at female. If I woke up tomorrow and was male, I don't think it would change how I think about myself very much. So I'll put this strength really low at 10%. And that's it! We've gone through all three diagrams we're asking you to fill out. Now it's your turn! As you saw, there are plenty of different ways to use the diagrams, and none of them are more right than any others. Just fill them out in whatever way makes most sense to you. And don't worry, there will be reminders of all of this when you're filling out the diagrams.